Hello, everyone. This is Kazan Bass. Today we will learn about the achievements of Taylor and Gilbreth. There are two people who are called the father of IE. One is Frederick Taylor and the other is Frank Gilbreth. This time, we will learn about the origin of IE while checking the achievements of these two people. So, let's get started with the lecture. Well, Meal. Today let's learn about the origin of IE starting with the achievements of two people who are indispensable for learning IE. Okay, thank you. The two people who are called the father of IE are Frederick Taylor and Frank Gilbreth. The present form of IE, which is called modern IE, began with Taylor's scientific management method. Taylor is the person who started time study aiming to find out the standard amount of work with the belief that a fair amount of work done per day should exist objectively. Gilbreth is the person who has worked on motion study from the perspective of human motion, especially the hand motion. Taylor is said to be a person who is strict about time. On the other hand, Gilbreth is said to be a humorous person. Although they have different personalities, they both have personal experience in work. In other words, the people who know the site well have conducted down-to-earth research on site with an enthusiastic scientific attitude. Taylor and Gilbert have made such significant contributions to the development of IE that they are indispensable people when learning IE. I see. What's interesting is that the result of enthusiastic research by the two people with different personalities from different angles have made a great contribution to the later development of IE. Time strict Taylor and humorous Gilbert. It is quite easy to remember, isn't it? Now let's check the details about the research of Frederick Taylor. Taylor conducted a research on 10 to 15 skilled workers in certain domain. He conducted accurate research on a series of work basic motion and tools used for that task. The method is to measure the time required for each basic motion with a stopwatch and selecting the fastest method for each element. And to cut down all wrong motions, slow motions and wasteful motions, and the fastest and best motions and the most appropriate tools are combined and grouped into a series of tasks. So the aim of his research is to define the best method as standard work and operators in all workplaces are enabled to operate fast with good motions. That's right. This research is well known as Taylor Shovel Scooping Experiment. At that time, the subjects of research were various things to be scooped by shovels such as scrap iron, coal, coke, limestone, sand and gravel. Of course, the size, shape and weight vary depending on the things to be scooped. Taylor researched on how much to scoop with shovel at one time to maximize the amount that can be scooped in a day. To be specific, the research was conducted by measuring the working time until scooping and throwing, and investigating the fastest working method. As a result, it was found out that if a light object and a heavy object are scooped with a shovel of the same size, excessive strength will be caused for scooping lightweight materials. On the other hand, the loss of strength will be caused and fatigue will be increased for scooping heavy materials. Based on this result, Taylor thought that there should be an appropriate weight for one scoop, and decided to use large shovel for light objects and small shovel for heavy objects. So this refers to the selection of the most appropriate tool, doesn't it? As a result of the standardization and education of working methods, the average daily amount of scooping per person has increased by 3.7 times. This experiment may be taken for granted when you think about it now. However, when this idea was first introduced, it must have been a big shock. From the perspective of enabling the development of subsequent industry, it can be said that Taylor has made great achievements. It is a slow and effective way of thinking nowadays to improve productivity by selecting the most appropriate tools and standardizing work methods. Next, let's check the achievements of Gilbreth, another important person in IE field. Gilbreth is the person who conducted the research to find out and remove wasted motion elements in work and create optimal methods by utilizing motion mind, motion consciousness. Motion mind refers to motion consciousness, being aware of differences in motion, discovery of the differences, being able to determine which motion is better, analysis of the differences, making good motion, improvement. The ability to do these things is called the motion mind. The comprehension of motion mind is an indispensable grounding for supervisors and IE staff to perform the management and improvement accurately. 
Has Gilbert conducted any famous research? Gilbert is famous for his research on bricklaying. Gilbert used to be a bricklayer at a construction company and has started work study since he was 17 years old. At that time, he realized that this was a problem. Even for simple tasks such as bricklaying, there must be an optimal work method. He thought that the increase of efficiency would definitely benefit both employers and employees. So Gilbert thoroughly investigated the causes of inefficiency and the way to increase the efficiency in bricklaying. Firstly, he found the following problems in the state before improvement regarding the motion of setting aside the bricks. There is a motion of bending down at the beginning of stacking. There is a motion of stretching when stacking. Bricking and mortar coating are done on different workbenches. The following improvements were made to deal with the problems. Installing a height adjustment stand on the foothold. Having brickwork and mortar coating done in the same place. In addition, it was found out that it took time to find a flat surface when stacking bricks regarding the motion of assembly of bricks. The flat surface is a lane downward in advance to solve this problem. Furthermore, it was found out that the number stirring times varies from person to person regarding to the motion of mortar coating. Improvements were made to match the work done by the person with the least number of stirrings and good quality to deal with this problem. As a result, the number of bricks stacked per day has increased by 2.7 times. This research is exactly the basic concept of improvement activities, and such improvement is still one of the important perspectives in any industry and sector nowadays. So that is the achievements of Gilbreth, isn't it? Actually, there is another achievement considered to be contributed by Gilbreth. An epoch-making breakthrough was made in a certain field thanks to Gilbreth's achievements. Do you know what it is? Oh, what is that? I don't know. It is surgery. The surgeon used to look for surgical instruments by himself during the surgery. During that time, the patient was still bleeding while lying on the bed, which was problem cannot be ignored in time critical surgery. Therefore, a method that nurses hand over the necessary instruments to help surgeons was introduced utilizing the research of Gilbert. As a result, the surgery time has been greatly reduced. It is also an achievement of Gilbert to help save the lives of patients, isn't it? Now I understand that the research results of Taylor and Gilbert have become the cornerstone of improving modern work and business. Next time we will learn about the overview of IE classification. Now, we make a summary of today's lecture. The two people called the father of IE are Taylor and Gilbert. Let's keep in mind these two people when learning IE. It's easy to remember as strict Taylor and humorous Gilbert. Taylor is the person who conducted shovel scooping experiment. As a result of selection of the most appropriate tool, standardization and education of working methods, the average amount of scooping has increased by 3.7 times. Gilbert is the person who conducted the research on brickling. The number of stacked bricks has increased by 2.7 times by improving the arrangement of bricks and standardizing the number of stirring times. Gilbert's research has later contributed to the reduction of the time required for surgery as well. That's all about today's lecture, so, see you at the next theme.